Welcome back, pilots, to the first LSU Shreveport student newscast of the semester. I'm Stephanie LaPrette. And I'm Josh Hale. LSU Shreveport had a very interesting visitor on campus this past week. That's right, Steph. C-SPAN was here to film a special on the history of Shreveport. You were there to get us a story. A C-SPAN camera crew was on LSU Shreveport campus this Wednesday as part of C-SPAN's effort to showcase cities outside of Washington, D.C. We spoke with video journalist Adrian Hoare about what the local content vehicles hope to capture in Shreveport. We're traveling around the country, we, uh, we spend a week in, in a city in the U.S. and while we're in that city we do um, videos about the history of the city as well as the literary culture of the city. Um, and we're also visiting schools, um, city governments to talk to students and, and city leaders about um, C-SPAN and why we're spending a week in their community. Oakland Cemetery was just one of the stops made during C-SPAN's stay in Shreveport. History professor Dr. Gary Joyner told us why he gave C-SPAN a tour of the cemetery. Part of the history of this city is contained in this cemetery. This is the old city cemetery, dates back to 1847. And we have 16 mayors and uh, about a thousand yellow fever dead. Uh, we have several hundred Confederates, some Union soldiers. Uh, this is the history laboratory <clears throat> for the city of Shreveport. Can you talk at all about what it would have been like to, to be a madam or what, what that was, what that meant? Um, well, during the time that Annie McKean was, was working, she, Shreveport was a booming area. It was just becoming... And so one of the one of the purposes that we have while we while we visit here is really to tell the the story of the founding of the city, which is why we're here today at the cemetery, um, and also tell uh, about how the, the the folks of Shreveport have contributed to to making this country kind of what it is today. The episodes will air on C-SPAN's Book TV and American History TV on March third and fourth. For LSU Shreveport Student News, I'm Stephanie Lepret. Wow, stuff. that's pretty cool that uh, some of our professors here at LSU Shreveport are going to be on a nationally televised show. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. In other news, as part of Sexual Responsibility Week, the LSU Shreveport Student Activities Board hosted a health fair in the UC to raise awareness among students. I was there to get you the story. Did you know that Louisiana has the highest percentage of syphilis cases in the nation? Were you aware that Cattle Parish has one of the highest rates of gonorrhea, syphilis, and chlamydia cases? These are just a couple of the startling facts given to students at this past Monday's Sexual Responsibility Health Fair. Director of Student Activities Kimberly Thornton gives us some more information about the event. We started this morning and Monday um, on the Responsible Sexual Behavior Health Fair from 11 to 12 and had vendors from all over the Arclitex talk about the educational benefits of being sexually responsible. The Student Activities Board brought in LSUS professors and representatives from several organizations to teach students about the importance of healthy sexual behavior. We had a health fair this past fall and we had a couple of issues, but apparently it sparked some interest and so the students requested that we have another one. And we had a good turnout today, I think. We just had it for an hour and we just talked about whatever questions they had and I and, uh, just wanted to give some good information about positive sexual behavior. The Philadelphia Center offers free HIV testing. Uh, also, it's a mouth swap test. You can come in and get a free HIV HIV test and find out your results uh, that same day. I think probably the biggest thing we discussed today was the fact that there truly is no 100% such thing as safe sex. We talked about the fact that um, HPV is the number one STD in our nation, that up to 80% of the population is infected. All of the organizations represented at the event shared a common goal, to treat students to a wealth of sexual knowledge that will hopefully help them make wise decisions in the future. We talked about the fact that, um, that they need to be extra careful when they're making their sexual choices because it could end up taking them down a road they didn't plan to go, like death. This is Josh Hale reporting for LSU Shreveport Student News. Also, as part of Sexual Responsibility Week, the Student Activity Board held a Sex Jeopardy event in the UC Theater. This event was a fun and interactive way for students to learn facts about sex. Students' sexual knowledge was put to the test in the familiar Jeopardy format. Prizes were given to the top teams. 
You might remember the stir created by the Snap It to Stop It campaign spearheaded by the SGA. The campaign resulted in students receiving their financial aid checks on the first day of the spring 2012 semester. SGA President PJ Harrington tells us more. We definitely had a huge swell of support from the student body. Um, Ronnie Longstrat, it was sort of his baby. He came up with the idea and he spearheaded it for SGA and then all of SGA was on board. And then of course the students. I mean, the students are what made the difference and without their involvement, we wouldn't have been successful. Students on campus were overjoyed with the results of the Snap It to Stop It campaign. And it couldn't have been a success without your input. That's right. And speaking of big changes on campus, the LSU Shreveport Bookstore started offering textbook rentals to students this semester. Reporter Rainy Graff has the story. The textbook rental program allows students to rent their books for a fraction of the cost and then return them at the end of the semester. The bookstore's assistant director, David Dinkins, explains more on how the rental program works. A rental allows you to go ahead and pay a set rental price up front, which is usually 40 to 45 percent of the price of a new book, and you're able to rent that book for 125 days, which is the length of the semester. Um, at the end of the semester, just once you're done with your final, all you do is you bring the book back into the store, you turn it in, we send it off, and you're good to go. A study at Daytona State College found that many students did not save very much money when they rented their books. In fact, when our reporters spoke to LSUS students, we found that many agreed with the study. I rent them because they get here faster. If I rent them online, then they take forever to get here. So I just get them from the school and I pay double, like buying the book actually. So Another student seems to feel that rental prices are too high. Well, I've never rented before this semester, but this semester I did rent from the bookstore and I found them extremely overpriced. Um, I probably could have gotten the books for about $50 less each online. Still, other students told us they see perks to buying textbooks instead of renting. I enjoyed renting textbooks, but this semester I decided to compare the prices of renting versus buying, and some websites offer cheaper uh, opportunities for buying books, and you also get the benefit of selling them back. Last semester I went ahead and sold them. They had all the books I had at the textbook corner, so I just went ahead and used the money from those books to buy my next set. So. I did not know that the bookstore was doing their own rentals. So shame on me. Now that I know, I actually might rent my textbooks since you guys informed me very well. There are advantages and disadvantages to renting textbooks instead of buying. So before making your next purchase, be sure to check out your campus bookstore to compare rental rates on your required textbooks. Reporting for LSU Shreveport Student News, I am Rainy Graff. Thanks, Rainy. If you are interested in taking advantage of the rental program, Visit the bookstore for more information. So, Steph, Valentine's Day is coming up. It's next week, Josh, and it's also the topic of this week's Pilot Points. The countdown to Valentine's Day is underway, and we want to know your opinions on the holiday. Also, can someone please tell me what love means? Love, to me, means sacrifice, um, being selfless with another person. I feel like there's two different kinds of love. There's that family love that you have for someone, um, and then there's that special love. Love has to be unconditional. You can't love somebody on terms. What are your opinions on Valentine's Day? I love Valentine's Day. It's such a happy holiday. Like, we get to spread love and joy and all come together as one. Well, Valentine's Day and love to me really is about um, having that significant other, having that one that you can say is yours. And I have one like that. and. I think she loves me, so that's how I feel about it. Just another day in the year. Probably more commercial holiday for, probably Hallmark, basically. I think Valentine's Day is fantastic. Why do you think that? Because girls are awesome. I love you. Have you ever done anything silly for love? Lots of silly things for love that we are not going to talk about, but yes. I've jumped out of a two-story house for love so it's like <laughs> that counts did it work yeah i was fine but her dad saw me leave i've driven 12 hours one way just to see somebody <laughs> i mean one time uh, i jumped out of a bridge one time at the uh university court you're not the first person to tell us that they've jumped off of a high place <laughs> for love someone give me a definition of love <laughs> no. How does it make you feel? 
supposedly all warm and tingly on the inside. I guess that's what I'm guessing. Well, there is a surprise. I can't really say it over the air right now, but I got her a little coupon book so she can trade in some hugs, kisses, little movie theaters, stuff like that. For the people that are single, it kind of sucks because they don't have anybody to share it with, but you always have friends for that and like girls can go out and like have a girls night out and eat dinner together. If I did expect anything, it'd probably just be candy. Yeah, I think my friends make me some food. It's like a cake pop. Food. Friend love is love too, guys. Yeah. So you're not just focusing on one person. You're saying... Oh no, I'm free like whoever out there, you know. <laughs> I need a valentine. Hit me up on Twitter at Kobe's Girl. <laughs> Hit her up on Twitter at Kobe's Girl. <laughs>Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Yeah, that stuff that looked like a lot of fun to shoot. It was. People have some strong opinions on Valentine's Day. Yeah, I think I might actually go for that girl on, on Twitter. I'll, I'll tweet her and see what she has to say. You should. She's expecting your tweets, people. <laughs> but in our next story, the lead animator for the nationally recognized Moonbot Studios was on campus for a special lecture. Student reporter Zach Robertson brings us the story. Recently, the Campus Technology Center offered an introduction to 3D animation class to students and non-students who were interested in learning the craft. Thirteen participants attended the class to learn from Moonbot Studios' lead animator, Jamil Laham. Oops, I'm stuck. So... Laham worked on the 2011 animated short film The Fantastic Flying Books of Morris Lesmore that is currently nominated at this year's Academy Awards for Best Animated Short Film. The class began with brief explanations on the 14 animation principles such as anticipation, timing, planning, and entertainment. This is entertaining to watch. He can say, oh, oh, that was painful. <laughs> yeah, why am I supposed to watch you? <laughs> I go, ah, oh, when I'm in pain. But Tom and Jerry, they, they earn their check. You know, they go, what? Oh, you know, and that's entertaining. He went on to demonstrate the basic principles of 2D and 3D animation through the TVP Animation Pro and Autodesk Maya programs. He demonstrated 2D animation with the finger point example and 3D animation with the bouncing ball example. The participants took notes of his demonstrations and succeeded in creating their own 3D product. We asked a few participants what it meant to have Moonbot's lead animator teach them the basics of 3D animation. Yeah, it was really cool. He's a really talented guy, and he had a lot of insight to share about the process, so I just wanted to leech as much of that off of him as I could. Yeah, I saw um, the Morris Lesmore film and um, loved the animation in it and wanted to learn more about how it was done. I went to the premiere of Morris Lesmore last spring, and I thought it was fantastic. So I was excited to meet one of the creators of this great work of art. If the introduction course is a success through evaluation, a more detailed follow-up course will be offered in the near future. For LSU Shreveport Student News, now. I'm yeah. Zach Roberson. Now. Thanks, Zach. For a local animation studio to be nominated for an Academy Award, that's, that's pretty impressive. It is. Yeah, and for one of their lead animators to be here on campus giving a lecture, that's a great opportunity for students. We're really lucky here. Absolutely. That wraps it up for this week, Pilots. Please leave your suggestions for future newscasts in the comment section below. Or you can look us up on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Have a nice week, Pilots. You stay classy, LSU Shreveport.